Hello, Anson Griffin here again with another YouTube tutorial featuring MATLAB. Today we're looking at Gaussian elimination in matrices. Some fairly big assumptions today. You're familiar with matrices, familiar with Gaussian elimination, familiar with MATLAB and familiar with for loops. So if you're here for a basic tutorial, you're going to be disappointed. I'm not doing the basics and apologies in advance if you are. So. There's my matrix to start off with, x1 plus y1 plus z1, or I'm sorry, x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 3. Next row, 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 7x3 equals 0. Next one, x1 plus 3x2 minus 2x3 equals 17. And we want to solve for x1, x2 and x3. Now, I'm just going to scroll slowly here. I'm not even going to do the commentary. So we're still scrolling along here. Still scrolling along. Still scrolling along. And we end up, we're nearly there. And we end up with that. I suppose we could go another row. you end up with that upper echelon matrix. Now you could have stopped before, but we've just gone the whole way here. And you end up with that upper echelon matrix. So X3 equals minus two. We back substitute in um, X2 is four, and we back substitute again, and X3 is minus two. Now apologies if I've gone too quickly there, but I just moved on. So I assume you know all of that. So we start the MATLAB program. Just zoom out a little bit here. So we tidy up, we clear the command window, we clear all the variables and we close any figures. There are the inbuilt MATLAB commands we're going to use. We're using the example we did above. So X there is the original matrix. So and remember each semicolon will give you a row one. So three minus point one minus point two is row one. 0.17 minus 0.3 is row 2, etc. The right hand side, I called it B above, is 7.85 minus 19.3 and 71.4. And we're going to call a function called Gauss Naive. And the two inputs are the two matrices X and Y, and the output is Z. Now, I have some values printed out, but these values are coming from the function described below. So there's the function, Gauss Naive. X and Y become A and B. And it's X here going out. That's the return value, which is going to become Z. So we get A. Now remember, A in our example is a 3 by 3. But we just want to do a little error check that we get the number of rows and the number of columns. And if it's not a square matrix, it kicks out. So we just did a, a little if statement there. If M does not equal N, we generate an error and the program ends. Next thing there, NB is going to be N plus 1. So NB is going to be 3 plus 1, which is 4. And the augmented matrix is A and B. So we're going to get the left-hand side and the right-hand side into one matrix. F print F, the augmented matrix at the start, is AUG there last line there so let's just go back up and just have a little look at that so there's the augmented matrix before we do anything 3 minus 0.1 minus 0 0.2 7.85 0 0.17 minus 0 0.3 minus 19.3 3 minus 0 0.2 10 and 71.4 and remember that is a 3 by 4 
So we start off with a 3 by 3 and the right hand side, the 7.85, the minus 19.3 and the 71.4, we merge that into one matrix. Now this is where things start to get a little difficult. So K, we have a nested for loop. K is the outer for loop and I is the inner for loop. So K, the first value is going to go from 1 to 2, where I, the colon, N minus 1, 1 to 2. And I is going to go from K plus 1 to N. I is going to go from 2 to 3. Now, if I just take the first one slowly, the rest is kind of all right. So the factor is Aug I K. So that would be the augmented matrix 2 comma 1 divided by K K, which is 1 comma 1. So it's 2, 1 divided by 1, 1. And just go up there. So 2, 1 is 0 0.1 and 1, 1 is 0 0.3. So 0 0.1 divided by 3 is 0 0.033. And I've done an F print F there. The factor value when K is... And I is, and if I just go back up again, sorry for the going back up and going back down. The factor value in K is 1 and I is 2 is 0 0.033. Okay, so we've done that. Now, so AUG brackets I comma k colon mb so what's i going to be i is 2 and k colon mb is 1 to 4 so the augmented matrix row 2 columns 1 to 4 equals the right hand side the augmented matrix of i which is 2 1 to 4 minus the factor of the augmented the augmented k comma k colon mb which is one colon one to four so to recap the new row two column one to four equals the right hand side the old row two columns one to four minus the factor times the augmented matrix of row one columns one to four so you do that and then you print out the augmented matrix so that's just for the the first loop of the inner loop so let's go back up so we have it there the new row 2 is 0 7.033 minus 0.2933 and minus 19.5617 where do those values come from well we had Point looking up above point 0.1 but minus the factor of the one above so that's point 0.1 minus point oh three three times 3 which is going to give us point 0.1 and point 0.1 minus point 0.1 is 0 then we have 7 minus point oh three three times minus point oh 0.01 which is plus point oh oh three three. so row 2 column 2 is 7.033 oh, oh, etc So I think I've just taken that one reasonably. So that's just the first go. That's the first of the inner loop of I. But you keep going. You complete I uh, columns. Uh, I, you do that how many times? That's from two to four. And then you do the outer loop again. And your K is two, which would be the second time. That goes round. And in my program here, I got it to print out the values each time I went round those nested for loops. And if you ran that yourself, you, you just, it's just to sort of prove it works. So just there, now I didn't do it as well as above. Sorry about this.
we got it into upper echelon form we didn't get it into your know, row one one is one and row sorry position one one is one and position two two is one and position three three is one but it's the same thing so we have there z3 would be equal to 70.0843 divided by 10.01 and once we have z3 we can then back substitute i said z3 x3 we can back substitute to find x2 and once we have x2 and x3 we can back substitute again to find x1 so let's go down again there how do we do that well x is the output here it's our answer so zeros so that's going to be a, we're going to put in zeros and how big is the array going to be a three by one so we're going to have one one two one three one and each contains zeros before we do anything and then what i did was to get the three values there i have we just get just one there that one there i just get x3 which because remember the last time the the last run n is three so i want to get three four divided by three three so that would give me the um, the x3 value how do i get the others the other two a little for loop like that just this time not in this just i equals n minus one two one so we start in row two and work backwards so remember n minus one would be three minus one which is two go back in jumps of minus one two one and we calculate xi so we calculate x2 and we calculate x1 so then x is the returned array go back up above and if you remember when we called this few minutes ago it said x would become z so i did a little f print f here the solution to x1 is z1 the solution to x2 z2 and the solution to x3 is z3 okay i know that wasn't easy but thanks very much and thanks for listening